There's been a few changes to the Windows key and shortcut uh, keys, especially since the anniversary update. So I'm going to bring up the on-screen keyboard here so you can see exactly which keystrokes I'm pressing and uh, what they do. So here we go. So rather than uh, doing this from uh, top to bottom, I'm going to go through the numbers and then I'm going to go through the letters. But rather than doing the keyboards across like this, I'm going to go through them alphabetically. So if we start off with the Windows key and then we come up here and we go to the one key, you'll see in this particular case, it brings up uh, Microsoft Edge browser. Uh, so uh, let's position that. Let's go ahead and click on the number two and you'll see that it brings up the store. And three brings up File Explorer. Now the truth be told, is that those are not hard-coded to that. What's going on here is if you look down here on the taskbar, those are opening up like the Windows 1 key is corresponds to the first icon and the 2 key the second icon. So whatever you have on your taskbar, these are shortcuts to your taskbar locations. So all you have to do is click on the Windows key and the next number, like in this case 4, and it brings up Chrome in this case because that's what's on my taskbar down here. So that covers your taskbar up through, of course, 10 because there's only a 0 or 10 to 1 through 0. So uh, let's go ahead and um, minimize these and we'll take a look or get rid of some of these. And like I said, we're going to go ahead instead of doing it from the keystrokes across the top here, we're going to start with the letter A and go through the alphabet that way. So let's go over here, click on uh, Windows A. You see it brings up A for Action Center. That's a pretty easy one. So you're going to call up your Action Center really quick that way. If we go A, B, no functionality there. Uh, same with uh, Win C. If we come back down here to the Windows icon and press on C, uh, you'll see that nothing happens there as well. And going off to D, if we click on it, it appears that uh, Nothing happens here, but we're going to have to open up some applications first to uh, see what functionality it provides. So I'm opening up some of those shortcuts uh, to applications and pressing on the Windows icon now and D. So you'll see that they all minimized and when you press it again, it'll restore them exactly where they were. So it's a uh, quick way to clear all the clutter and be able to take a look at your desktop in case there's a shortcut you want to access there. Now if you press the control windy, okay, you'll see that we create a new desktop. There are some other commands that use multiple keystroke combinations, but this one is the control windows and D. And you'll see, let me move this out of the way a little bit here and go back and look at that. And you'll see that we've created another desktop. I'm going to go ahead and delete that for now. Now, as although we had some keys that were linked to the taskbar down here, uh, like the one uh, key, there's some that are hard coded to applications. For example, the Windows E uh, brings up the Explorer uh, always, so that's a shortcut that'll always be there. Uh, another one is the Windows and F key, which brings up the Feedback Hub. And sometimes there's keystroke combinations. For example, if we do the uh, after the Feedback Hub, if we click on the Control uh, Windows and uh, F you'll see it brings up the Find Computer um, dialog box. And by the way, this only works if you have Active Directory running. But for those of you on networks, it may come in handy. So another keystroke combination that you might be more familiar with is the WinG. That brings up the game bar so you can record games. Uh, it's not going to do it right now because it doesn't detect a game. Uh, but that's what uh, it normally does. Now the Windows H key, we click on uh, that over here. Oh, let me get to it. Windows and, and H, and you see it's going to bring up the share dialog box. In this case, it's we're, we're on the desktop, so it doesn't uh, really have a really great function here. But if you're in an application, uh, let's bring up the store, for example, and we click on that, and then we can share from uh, the screen we're looking at in the uh, store. So the next one would be the Windows I key. And the I key uh, brings up uh, your basic uh, settings. So don't, worry, don't ask me why it's not S, uh, but it brings up your Windows uh, settings at the top level of the settings icon or settings screens. Uh, if we go on to uh, 
a J, uh, nothing happening here. Um, so we'll go on to the K, and that brings up your connect to a wireless display. So if you have a Miracast adapter or running something like that, it'll automatically bring up that. Again, it saves you from having to go over to the, notifi or the action center. Uh, we go over to L, and you can't see it here, but it log locked the computer. I had to re-log in. Uh, so that's what the L key does. Uh, WinM, bring up some apps here. We'll do the WinM. It minimizes them all. Almost identical to the Windows D. Uh, and if we do the shift, it brings them back. Uh, not going to use this very much. Probably going to use the Windows D, uh, which toggles that. It's a lot easier to use. Now, if we move on to the uh, Windows uh, N, it depends upon if you have certain things installed. For example, on my uh, other login, it brought up the Windows OneNote because that has a, a license under my other username. Uh, so you have to be, some of these keys you might have to experiment depending upon what your applications are and what shortcuts they've installed. So we move on to uh, O, nothing there. Uh, let's go off to uh, P then. And it, as most of you already know, the Windows P uh, brings up the ability to, to uh, configure your system to go to multiple screens. If you have one installed, uh, that's a pretty popular one. Now, if you go, go ahead and hit the Q, you'll see Cortana comes up over here. Uh, there's actually another keystroke in a second. You'll see that it also does it. But it uh, launches your uh, Cortana. No big deal. R is the run command. Um, Go to here to Windows and S, which is Search, which is also Cortana as well. Now Windows T brings up actually uh, your programs on your taskbar. It's a little hard to see here, but if I click up T, uh, you'll see that behind here there's the first one. If I, if I do it again, oh, let me get this stuff out of the way. Windows T brings up the first one. If I do it again, uh, Let's go off to the side and we'll do Windows T again. Brings up that, do it again, the second one. Uh, so it toggles through your running apps down here. Now if we go over here to the uh, Windows U key, and that brings up your ease of access settings like narrator, keyboard, and those kind of settings. Now the Windows uh, V, so if we click on Win key here and the V, and nothing happening there. But if we click on the window and the W, uh, you'll see that we bring up the workspace, uh, ink space. Uh, so that's a whole discussion in itself, but that's it brings it up for the quick access to that. Now you'll see that if we click on the windows and the uh, X key, uh, it appears like nothing happens. And that's because, like a lot of keys, you have to have the focus on the right thing. And in this case, it can't be on an application. It has to be on desktop. So if I click over here on the desktop and I do this again, Windows X, you'll see it brings up the admin menu. Now, this is the same menu you get if you right-click on the Windows icon. It's all the admin functions that are available. Now that we're done with the 1 through 10 and the A, B, C, D uh, alphabet keys, we're going to go look at some of the other keys here. First thing we're going to take a look at is the plus and minus. And what they do is they invoke and can change your uh, magnifier. So let's uh, go ahead and click on the Windows key. And then we're going to click on these up here. So we're going to go ahead and click on the Windows key. And if I click on the minus key, it invokes the magnifier. But because we're already at uh, the 100% resolution, it doesn't do it anything. So uh, instead, if we use the plus key there, uh, let's go ahead and put it back, and I'll use the equal sign first. You'll see that it jumps out to whatever the last setting was for the magnifier. Uh, so let's go ahead and, uh, you have to go down here, by the way, if to see what's going on, but Windows minus uh, will put you back and forth. Instead of using this interface, you can just use these shortcut keys to uh, use your magnifier. Now there's a lot of special purpose keys here that if we click on Windows and the you know, parentheses or bracket or whatever, uh, they don't do anything. Uh, so it's nothing that uh, you need to be concerned with there. There are some hidden ones, though. If you go down here and you click on the uh, Windows key and uh, the comma, 
and you'll see that it serves as a unhold it by the way let me try that again and hold it you see it has a desktop peak function not sure how useful that is but it is there nonetheless so enough of the non-useful stuff let's look at something that's pretty useful if we click on the windows key and use the arrow keys uh, you'll find out that we have some really great stuff going on as far as the snap function goes so I, first of all I'm making sure I have focus on that application if I use the left arrow with the wind it snaps it to the, it invokes the snap function and snaps that window to the left now if we go back and we do the same thing again but this time we hit the wind and the right arrow key it snaps it to the right it holds true for all of the snap functions if we put these back uh, in position uh, to where we can use the snap function um, Let's get this arranged here. Uh, and we use the Windows key. And we use the up arrow. It full screens the application that uh, has focus. And if we use the down arrow, it uh, puts it back. And if we go back to here again, it minimizes it. Now there's a few key bad combinations that are very useful. Uh, some of those you're probably well familiar with. If we go click on the Windows key and we click on the uh, page down, excuse me, the print screen, you'll see your screen dims. And if you go out here to your picture folder, there's a screenshot folder and that's where it stores uh, that screenshot you just took. And if we uh, click on the, well, let me go ahead and get rid of the, uh, some of this clutter here. Let me go ahead and close that down. Uh, and if we click on the windows and the pause key, um, it brings up your system properties for some reason. Um, again, not that often you're going to use that, but there's a, another shortcut. Okay, next is the Windows uh, tab key. If we do that, you'll see it brings up the Aereo 3D where you can choose uh, what program you want to uh, grab. Uh, you can do that. Now there's a couple other hidden gems here. For example, here's a program running uh, in a narrow, narrow column, but if you hit the shift uh, windows key and up arrow, it extends it into top to bottom on the screen. Again, uh, usefulness of it, uh, I'm not sure, uh, but it does do that. So there you have it. There's most of the commands you can use. Uh, oh, by the way, there's also Windows Home uh, that you can do. Uh, and what that does is it minimizes all but your active window, which is a pretty nice uh, one as well. So a complete list of these functions are in the description for this video. Plus, you can visit my website at www.oguygeek.com. And uh, in that article there, you'll see the exact same list. I uh, hope you enjoy them. I hope they uh, provide some uh, really benefits for you. Hey, and don't forget to subscribe to Old Guy Geek. Come on back for Windows 8 and Windows 10 and Windows Phone 8 and Windows 10 and general how-to videos. All here to help you make the most out of your system.